we're going to talk about the assignment statement. Now, um, recall when we were talking about designing a process, um, anything that the process needed to remember, we were giving it a, it a name and calling it a variable. And a variable in programming refers to a location where a value can be stored, not to a specific value. In other words, the value of a variable can change. You can think of it as designating a place in the computer's memory. Now, um, an assignment statement is how a variable gets its value, uh, the most usual way anyway. And um, in a lot of Visual Basic programs are made up mostly of assignment statements. So here are a few examples. Uh, this one is simple. It just assigns the value 7 to variable x. This one assigns the string Cindy to the variable name. Now, the quote marks are not part of the value, but what they do is they tell Excel that this is a literal string of letters that I want to assign as a value to this variable. And in this third example, I'm saying, OK, take the value of variable x, whichever, whatever it happens to be, add 1 to it, and then take the result of that calculation and store that into x. So that will eliminate the old value of x and replace it with a new value, which is the old value plus 1. So let me emphasize that even though it looks like an equation, an assignment statement is not an equation. Um, for example, in x equals 4, the x on the left-hand side here refers to the memory location that we're using the name x to designate. And the, the statement is an action rather than an equation. And it says, OK, take the value 4 and put it into location x. So writing x equals x plus 1, which would be a ridiculous equation, is a perfectly legitimate assignment statement. The x on the right means it refers to the value currently stored in location x. And so you get that value and add 1. And the x on the left refers to the memory place, the place where you're going to store the value. And so we're taking what was in there, adding 1, and storing it. OK. Now let's consider a sequence of assignment statements. And one thing to point out here is that the order of the statements is very important. So after this first assignment statement, um, location x contains the value 4. This one causes location y to contain the value 7. And now what we're doing here is we're getting the values currently stored in x, 4, the value currently stored in y, 7. We're adding them to get 11, and we're storing that into x. So x now contains 11. The 4 is gone. Here we're doing y equals 3. So we're wiping out the 7 and putting the 3 in its place. And now here we're taking the expression x plus y. x has currently got an 11. y has got a 3. 3 plus 11 is 14. 14 goes into the z. Now notice that using a value on the right-hand side, using a variable never changes its value. Putting the variable on the left side, that's when we're changing its value. That's when we're storing something in there. The other thing to notice is that I've got the same expression x plus y in line 3 and line 5. In line 3, it evaluates to 11. In line 5, it evaluates to 14. Why the difference? Because we changed x and y in between this line and this line. So um, this is what I, one thing I mean by saying the order is important. It means that the same expression can appear different places in your program. And just like a variable, it's going to have different values depending on what has happened. And in particular, the, the statements are executed in sequential order, first, to, first one, next one, next one, next one. And so that's very important because it makes a big difference on what the statement actually means, what the values of the variables are at that particular point. Now, often we'd like to write a program where, at some point, we need to exchange the values of two variables. Um, if you're a beginning programmer, it's very common to want to write code like this. And this is very natural. x equals y, and then y equals x. Let's think what happens here if x equals 4 and y equals 5. 
when I do this line, y equals 5, so I'm taking the value 5 and storing it into the x. What happened to the 4? It's gone. It's wiped out because I put a new value in there. So now when I do this line, x is already 5, and I'm just putting the same 5 back into y. So I'll end up with both of them being 5, which is not what I wanted. So here's the way to actually do it. You need a third variable to remember the value of x while it's being changed. So I'm calling this temp, and the first thing I do is set temp to the value x. Then I set x to the value y, and then I set y to the value temp. So if x is 4, temp is now 4. Now x is 5, and now y gets the value 4, which was stored in temp. So I did what I wanted to do. Now, um, I have a workbook that I've posted, and one of the macros in it, it simply exchanges the values of the two cells, A1 and B1. Uh, the code I wrote is on the next slide, and I'd like to point out a few things about it, because we're moving into where we're going to actually be writing code. So first of all, I used a banner comment to describe what my subroutine does. And we're always going to put one of those. It's part of our good programming practice. Um, my subroutine is called sub. That's a keyword that says I'm writing a macro. And I'm calling it exchange A1B1. It has open parentheses because that's a place where if I were using parameters, I would put them. We'll learn about parameters later. I also use comments inside the code to talk about um, an interesting detail. And you can always put a comment at the end of any line or on a line by itself. And notice the comments always start with these um, quotes, single quotes. I'm declaring my variable. I'm calling it temp. And I'm using the dim statement to say temp is a variable of type variant. OK, variant is an omnibus that can hold any kind of value. And I use that here because I don't know in advance what types of values will be in cells A1 and B1. So this will let me use whatever they are. OK, here I'm referring to cell A1 with cells 1, 1 dot value, um, its value, and I put that in temp. So if you think of it, this is filling the role of x that I used before. And now I take this value of cell B1, which is um, column 2 and row 1, put it into A1, and then I put temp into here. So same exact pattern that we were looking at on the previous slide. Uh, but this time using cells instead of plain variables. Now I want to emphasize here about this cells notation. Um, names like A1 and B1 are very convenient for human beings, but when we're writing a program, it's actually more convenient to be able to use numbers for the row and the column. The only tricky thing is that when I write, write cells of one number and another number, like N and M, the row number comes first and then the column number, whereas in the notation with a letter, the letter is the column. So I'm going from column first to row first. And that can be a little confusing. Um, you have to keep it in mind when you're starting to program. OK, so let's take a look now at the actual code. And I have it here. Um, first of all, let me just show you how it works. So I wrote my macro, and I have a button associated with it. and um, the place where you get those buttons is over here in the Insert tab, where I can add all sorts of controls to my um, worksheet. And here I set up a button that's associated with the macro that exchanges A1 and B1. So here's A1. It has 200. B1 has 10. Let's exchange them. And there you see. And I can just keep clicking and exchanging as much as I want. OK. So let's actually go over to Visual Basic. And here's the code for Exchange A1 and B1. And you can see it's exactly the same as what I showed you um, on the slides. So this shows you that actual code in action.